Hi everyone. Of all the niche subcategories within the already very niche world of Quake speedrunning, nothing has inspired quite as much discussion, experimentation and hard work as the 100 meter sprint. It's hard to believe the amount of effort players are willing to invest into going fast in a straight line for a few seconds. And it's also mind-boggling to me that after 25 years of runs on this goofy looking map, the 100 meter record is still being improved. In May 2025, Simex brought the world record time down to an impossibly fast 9.393 seconds. Not only that, Simex also achieved total domination of the Quake Olympics, crushing the 110 meter hurdles and 400 meter bunny hop records at the same time. In this video, I'll do my best to show just how optimized these seemingly simple records have become and why 1 20th of one second is a very big deal. I'll start by admitting something. For 20 years, I never really cared about the 100 meter dash. Sure, when players started competing on it, I was curious, but it never seemed relevant to real Quake speedruns. Where are the boosts, the crazy tricks, the RNG miracles? Those were the things that got me excited. Still, there were some interesting developments. Way back in the early 2000s, people realised that instead of the typical single strafe bunnies used in speedruns, you could strafe twice per jump for additional speed. With double strafes and power bunny hops, the first players were able to breach the 9 second barrier. Still, double strafing seldomly found its way into regular runs simply because it's very rare to be jumping in a straight line for so long. Other 100 meter specific techniques also appeared. Players started lowering their mouse sensitivity a lot. Smoother and more consistent turns in the air mean more potential speed, so the serious bunny hoppers were playing with almost comically low sensitivity. Who cares if you need a meter wide mouse pad to do a 180 degree turn? As long as you were only going in a straight line, you could swing the mouse huge distances from side to side to get the desired effect. Runners from other source games, particularly the masters of surf maps, came back to where it all began to try their hands at Quake. The 100m sprint became one of the most competitive records in the game, right up there with E1M1 and E2M1, which were also primarily a test of pure bunny hopping skill. Funnily enough, the best regular Quake runners generally weren't the most competitive 100 meter sprinters. For example, Crashfit held the 100 meter record without ever submitting a regular run. Same goes for Snowy, who still sits at fourth place with a grand total of zero Quake runs on the STA tables. I think this makes sense. From my own experience, the 100 meter run just feels like a different game, or at least a completely separate category. I'm not super interested in relearning the fundamentals of Quake movement just so I can stare at these orange pixels all day. But having said that, what kind of Quake speedrunning pundit would I be if I didn't at least try to break the 10 second barrier? After an hour of attempting to learn the double strafe technique, these were my results. <laughs> Back in 2020, Matt from the brilliant Matt's Ramblings channel, known in the Quake scene as Kippy, went as far as building a bot to try out unique ways of optimizing human style bunny hopping, that is, using inputs which were realistically possible for a human to perform. There, he had a simple but revolutionary idea. 20 years earlier, players had started using two strafes per jump instead of one. But why not use three? Training his bot to do this resulted in a fairly significant improvement, but it took some time before a human could successfully implement it in a run. In 2023, Chambers managed to add some triple strafes on this 200 meter map. Here he realised that triple strafes only became more efficient than doubles at a certain speed. This became another puzzle for the 100 meter runners to solve. 
Should you start with triples from the beginning, or switch from doubles to triples at a specific point? In 2024, I'm 64 took the 100 meter record with a time of 9.46. Before that, he'd had just a tiny bit of practice bunny hopping after grinding E2M1 for his flawless and unbeatable six second world record, one of Quake's single greatest achievements. On the 100 meter run, he established a new strafing pattern, doing two strafes for the first two jumps to build up speed, and then switching to three strafes per jump after that. Not long after, Simex joined the quake scene, and this guy is a bunny hopping wizard. Next to grinding the 100 meter run for the tiniest improvements, he also went on an absolute rampage of STA's unbeatable demos list, managing to just barely squeeze out full second improvements to a bunch of very short custom map runs, many of which had stood for decades. I've been watching quake demos since I was a teenager, and these are some of the cleanest bunnies I've ever seen. On the 100 meter map, Simex initially adopted IM64's strafe pattern and took the top spot with a 0.007 second improvement. Yes, that's seven thousandths of a second. Here are just some of the attempts he decided to save over a three month period of grinding the map. Somewhere among his thousands of attempts, he started experimenting with not two, not three, but four strafes per jump. Just as a reminder, this is how fast a jump is in Quake. Can you swing your mouse smoothly back and forth while tapping alternating strafe keys four times in that fraction of a second? Kippy had actually tried this with his bot as well, with very minimal improvement, but honestly I would have argued that it was unreasonable to expect this from a human. But speedrunners find a way, and Simex came up with what for now is the optimal strafe pattern. A single jump with two strafes, then four jumps with three strafes, and then four strafes per jump until the end of the map. Let's look at the individual PBs he got before settling on his record, all within 0.1 seconds of each other. And here are the top 20 runs on the tables, with not even half a second separating first and last place. For an extra sense of how crazy Simex's time is, let's compare it to Kippy's three strafe bot. Simex starts slower, but actually gains ground when he hits his four strafe pattern and he finishes only 0.05 seconds behind the bot. Maybe Kippy will have to retrain the bot with a new definition of what's humanly possible. To further cement his status as Quake's Usain Bolt, Simex also broke the record on both of the less popular but still interesting bunny hop maps, the 110 meter hurdles and the 400 meter sprint. The hurdles map was originally planned to be a test of consistent single jumps. The spacing is set so that you clear each hurdle with a pre-strafe and a jump, then land and start another pre-strafe. This was the method used by runners all the way until 2020 when Chambers found a better method. By doing two wide jumps in between a couple of the hurdles at the beginning, he could build up enough speed to clear the later hurdles with continuous single bunnies. Simex's insane bunny speed meant that he could start this one jump per hurdle sequence almost immediately, absolutely crushing the next best times by Chambers or Kissimoff. And on the 400 meter map, Simex also quickly took the record, again with the help of Kippy's detective work. Kippy realized that once you hit a very high speed, you can do even better power bunnies by setting your backward speed to a specific negative value and pressing backwards each time you land instead of pressing forwards. I won't try to explain why this works, but in Kippy we trust. Here's his explanation if you'd like to pause and read it. 
Using this method, Simex managed to beat the human Taz Strafer Crashfort, whose previous record was already almost a full second faster than Muti's second place run. New techniques, machine learning, thousands upon thousands of attempts. These are the lengths people will go to to bring these pure bunny hopping runs to their current level. Even now, additional tools are being developed to further understand and perfect the technique. Here we're looking at every 100 meter run ever submitted. And while I'm quite sure there's still room to improve, for now Simex is the champion. Thanks for listening. GG.